I've always been one to push the envelope a little bit and in my quest to find a way to help a bullet fly better I watched several videos on YouTube of high-speed bullet flight in air and I just came to the conclusion that most of the resistance on a bullet is over the nose of the bullet and if you look at bullets all of them are pretty much the same I mean they're different lengths different weights um, different boat tail, different points. But the resistance to me was over the nose of the bullet. And in my mind, I thought, is there any way that I can change the nose of that bullet to reduce the friction or drag on that bullet as it passes through the air? Increased surface area is one way to reduce friction. Um, longer nose bullets tend to reduce friction and have higher coefficients or fly better. Some of the downside of a longer nose is stabilization. So by re remaining short on the nose and cutting some grooves through the nose of that bullet, I could increase the surface area and not extend the nose to create a destabilization problem. So the initial thought was, to start close to the tip, cut some grooves back over the ogive, and relieve some of that pressure flying through the air. I uh, approached several people about this, and of course everybody was concerned it's gonna come apart, it's gonna fly apart in the barrel. Uh, raised some alarm for me too, but I still wanted to test what was in my mind and what I thought would be better. I took uh, a bunch of bullets to a machinist friend of mine who come up with the concept of cutting those grooves from tip to shank. But I wanted those grooves cut at the same twist rate as the barrel those bullets were going down. So in essence I wanted to match the rotation of that bullet that the rifles made that bullet twist at as it come out of the barrel. One of the first concepts was this bullet right here. You can see the grooves starting at the nose and ending back toward the end of the ogive. Those grooves are cut in a one in 10 twist because the barrel I'm shooting this bullet down is a one in 10 twist. So I've increased the surface of that bullet and the first test round down the barrel, I was a little apprehensive. I didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, it was one of those deals where I put it on sandbags and a string on the trigger, stood back and pulled the trigger. But what I found downrange was very impressive. These bullets were more accurate. Now, mind you, I'd done several hundred bullets, different depths of cuts, different widths of cuts, different number of cuts, different lengths of cuts. So you can imagine the thousands of bullets I shot in experimenting with this. Um, one good friend of mine says, these are things are gonna go off in Nether Netherland. You're never gonna be able to hit the target. I am here to say, I never missed a target all the way to a thousand yards, which is pretty crazy. I mean, I wondered where they were gonna go, but they flat worked. I improved accuracy. Stabilization was quicker flatter, faster, longer trajectory. It worked. I'd invite anybody that wants to take the long range course, if they want to come here and they want to shoot some of these test bullets and see the difference, they're more than welcome to sign up for the class. Come and give it a go.